What's up FPL bosses, it's your boy Ash once again back with another Juice Shots uh, and this time I'm bringing you something a little bit different this week. Uh, I've had to, as I do, step in for Nick. Uh, he is busy off buying a private jet or something. Uh, so as I do, back is killing. I'm carrying him once again. I'm here, going to be delivering the Game Week 29 preview for you guys. So I'm going to go through the fixtures. I don't know how Nick does it. I don't really watch his content. because Why would I follow someone's content who's 2.5 million overall rank in the world? You just wouldn't. So, But I'm like, I'm like 500k. So I've actually got some value to add to this thing. So I'm going to be going through the fixtures in game week 29. And I'm going to be assessing them. Uh, maybe even give a little prediction on what I think the result might be. And of course, some players for you to keep an eye on. And for those teams. For those teams, I'm sure you're eagerly awaiting for, for news conferences uh injury updates on on who those players you know those players that are flagging yellow at the moment and the right ones to bring in the right ones to change for so hopefully my wisdom and advice might be able to inspire you into those changes but before we get going into that please guys like the video you it means more to us than you know and if you could subscribe hit that subscribe button for us as well that'd be very very much appreciated Right, let's get into it. So, Saturday 1st of April. This is a big double game week coming up, guys. It's a very, very exciting week. Lots of people are bench boosting. Um, so it's important that we got, we get these right players in. Now, the, the first game of the, of the week is the 12 30 kickoff, Man City v Liverpool. Oh my God, what a game this is going to be. Uh, oh, you know, the international break's been two weeks long, two weeks too long. Uh, and so, yeah, we're, we're, we're being treated to something real special as a welcome back to uh, to FPL. But yeah, <sighs> usually goals in this one, right? Um, obviously, the big news is Haaland. Is he injured? Is he not? My guess is he's probably going to play this game. So if you've got him, great. But obviously, we know Man City are not on a double. So, But you know what Haaland can do? He can score three, four, five goals in a game. So if you've got him, great. If you haven't, like me, I don't have him. But So I'm hoping for a quiet game week from, from Haaland. But you can never keep this guy down. Liverpool, a bit, a bit better defensively of late um they've picked up a couple of wins and getting some results going uh i i, I do see this being a goal scoring game because it usually is but i'm just gonna oh do you know what i might even just go for a little draw here i fancy a little desmond a little desmond 2-2 two -two. um but yeah lots of people obviously liverpool do have a double this game week so lots of people um still have like salah and trent in their teams which i don't think are bad options especially consider considering they're on a double albeit the second game is a toughie as well but i think there's uh, i think there's some points to be had this game week it's just a shame from the city side like there's not really that many options to be going for um although now foden's injured Grealish could, could be an option now um so yeah i've got an eye on Grealish, but particularly for this game um, obviously Haaland is the standout one we've got, we're watching out for I don't think there's going to be clean sheets here so if you've got City or Liverpool defenders I don't think it's going to be a nice game for you guys but you never know with Trent he might pop up with a, with a beautiful assist so let's wait and see uh, next game of the game week we've got the league leaders Arsenal at home to Leeds uh, Leeds obviously fighting to stay alive in the Premier League I think they're going to be going all out try and get at least a well definitely going to be high, fighting for a point in this game they need to start getting as many points as they can. So I think they're going to take the game to Arsenal, which I think will play into their favour. Um, and that's when Arsenal are at their best. I think they'll just, they're, they will just exploit leads. They'll exploit the holes. Arsenal move the ball around so too quickly, too classily. They're just, they're just absolutely amazing to watch at the moment. They're just, just, they're just so well drilled. Defensively, a little bit of frailty there. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did, did let a goal in. But I just think with the players they've got, Saka in the form he's in, Martinelli in the form that he's in, Trossard in the form that he's in, Gabriel Jesus back in action now as well, Erdogan pulling the strings. It's just an absolute madness right now. So um, I think this would be a comfortable, comfortable win for Arsenal. I'd go 2 or 3-0. And, you know, Arsenal have a single game week. So I'm in this position, and I know a lot, a lot of you guys might be in the same position, where I've got Saka, I've got uh, Erdogan, and I've got Zinchenko. You might have... Saka, Martinelli and White. You know, you've got a combination of three Arsenal players. And lots of people are look, looking to move them out for double game week players. But I don't know. Like, you saw what Saka did in the last game. Two goals and assist. That's more than enough. Like, if he can do that again or Odegaard can do something similar. You know, why take these players out when they've got such a juicy single game week fixture? Take them out for someone who might have two kind of good double game week fixtures. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'll be, I'll be holding on to my Arsenal assets. Um, but obviously, you do you. Do you. 
But yeah, I can only see um, Arsenal coming out on top here. Hopefully with some, some attacking returns from Odegaard and Saka would be lovely. And a clean sheet would be nice too. Uh, third game, we've got Bournemouth v Fulham. Um, obviously Bournemouth right down the bottom fighting for survival. Fulham, no Mitrovic. He's banned for at least three games. We'll wait to see. Apparently it could be up to two years. All for a little nudge on the ref. Should have just banged him out. Take that two-year ban. At least earn it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, look, um, this isn't going to be a classic. Let's put it that way. I don't have any Bournemouth assets. I don't have any Fulham assets. Um, but if you've got like Andreas Pereira, this could be a nice little one for him to play in. But, you know, for, for you know, if he's part of your team, if he's, you know, on your bench or your bench boost and whatever. Um, but yeah, there's not too many, op like too many options in here. Fulham sitting there in ninth place in the league. Not really too much to fight for them, 39 points. So one more point, you know, they're on holiday. They're chilling. So um, I think there'll be I think there'll be a couple of goals. I think it'll be tight. I think it'll be tight. I'm going to go for a, I'm going to go for a Fulham 1-0 away win here um, and compound the misery of the Bournemouth fans. Right, after that, we've got Brighton v Brentford. Uh, Brighton in superb form. Brentford also going really, really well in the league. In fact, uh, only they're on the same amount of points in the league. So they're both having equally amazing seasons. Uh, for, for Brighton, it's all about the three M's, the M and M and M. It's the March, Matoma, McAllister, uh, triple up. Lots of people got those, at least two of those. In fact, I've only got one. I've only got, um, I've only got Matoma. And I've got a stew pinion, but I've got room for one more. And if I was going to go one more, oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Alexis McAllister looks so good in the tent, and he's and he's coming to life a little bit more. But he just goes on these barren spells of of, of blanking too much. I quite like Solly March, but I mean the stats will tell you it's all about Alexis Mack. But yeah, look, I don't think any combination of them is is particularly wrong. Um, it's just who who you prefer. That like either you know any one of them could just go off in a game. Um, and then from, from Brentford's point of view, obviously main man Ivan Tony, he's in my team. Um, you know, hoping that he can go a game without, the first game at least, without a yellow card. Um, because he's on nine, so if he does get a yellow, that's it, he's banned. So kind of hoping he can save that for the second match of his double game week. And then, then I can really sort of justify moving Tony back to Haaland in my team. But yeah, um, I'm, I, I wouldn't be... Because I've got Brentford defenders and Brighton defenders, it's, I mean, a, a nil-nil here wouldn't be too bad for me. I'm not going to lie. So I'm going to go for a nil-nil. I'll take it. I'll take it and let them let my attacking players go off in the second match of the game week. Um, Crystal Palace v Leicester. Obviously, we know what's happened to Crystal Palace. Uh, obviously, Sack Vieira then took a thump in away at Arsenal. So it's not a good time for Crystal Palace. Um, I think they've got the youth coach that's in charge. Oh, no, no. Brought in Roy Hodgson. Of course, up and coming brand new manager with fresh ideas have come to take over Crystal Palace until the end of the season. But you know what he's going to do. He's going to make him really difficult to beat. Um, and so for that reason, it might be a little bit tricky for Leicester. I, before Hodgson, before this, I only mean, just thought about this, to be honest, before Hodgson, I'm thinking this is going to be a two or three nil to Leicester. Um, lots of people jumping on James Madison. I've got Madison. I've had him for about three game weeks now. He's not quite gone off. Yeah, but I think this double could be the time. I've seen a few, a few teams that are captain Madison as well. Harvey Barnes is one to keep an eye out as well. But I don't know. I kind of want Madison to just blow up in this game. I'd probably go for a little 2 0 Leicester or maybe a 2 1 Leicester, something like that. Um, but yeah, and obviously the other problem a lot of people are having with Leicester is the Ward situation. Obviously, Ward got dropped for the last game. Everson's come in. Rogers said he's going to have an extended run in the team. So if you've got Ward like I have on my bench and I'm playing bench boost, time to get Ward out of there. There's a couple of options. Obviously, go straight to Everson. He's 3.8 or 3.9. And then you've got Steele, who's the number one at Brighton now, who we just talked about. Um, he's a good option as well. So I'm probably going to do a really boring move and do Ward to Steele because there's no point bench boosting a keeper that's playing too but actually isn't playing. doesn't make any sense. So there we go. Uh, Forest v Wolves. Probably going to be a nil-nil. Forest are pretty decent at home. Um, Wolves disciplinary, man. Like two, was it two yellow, two red cards in the last game? It's just, it's just so spontaneous. It's just about them and Fulham just, just burst into flames and just start getting red cards everywhere. It's mad. But um, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of, like Brennan Johnson's probably the only one really from Forest that I would consider. Maybe Morgan Gibbs-White if, if I was having a bad day. But 
yeah, there's no one else there. And Wolves, I can't, I just can't get excited about Wolves. There's no options, there's no assets there either. So to be honest with you, it's, I don't care about this scoreline, but I'm going to say nil-nil anyway. Uh, last game of the Saturday, Chelsea v Villa. This is interesting. This is very, very interesting. I actually don't have any Chelsea assets, but I know a lot of people do. A lot of people got Chilwell. Some people got Havertz. Um, really tough to call what, what Chelsea are at the moment because against Villa in... Um, was it they didn't play Villa last week? They did. No, they played Everton last week. I'm going crazy. Um, when they played Everton in the last game week, they were in total control. And then Potter made the weirdest substitutions. Like he took Pulisic off and then brought Conor Gallagher on. And then the whole just momentum of the game just changed. And it, he let them back into the game. So I think Potter needs to just brush up on his tactical now a bit more. Learn to see some games out. I think if, if Chelsea can get the lead early or can get the lead, if he can do that, if he can just stop making stupid transfer, stupid substitutions, they'll be able to hang on to a lead um, and probably get the win. And, you know, it might even just you know get a 1-0 here. But I think with the threat that Villa have, they're on a bit of a run. Um, they need one more win and they're past the 40 point mark and then they're chilling. Do you know what I mean? Watkins is in great form. Uh, Buendia's looking good. Bailey's looking lively. Do you know what I mean? They've got a bit about them now, Aston Villa. So um, I think if Chelsea can can get the lead early on, they probably hang on. But I think if, if Villa can get the early goal, um, yeah, I think this could be like a like a little two one Villa. So yeah, and I'm hoping Watkins can get can bag bag some goals because he he's the one that I brought in for Haaland. Um, it was basically a decision of Haaland one game against Liverpool or Watkins three games. Uh, so I'm hoping Watkins can just absolutely go off in, in this double. But yeah, I'm going to go Villa 2-1. A little bit of an upset there. Uh, then we've got on the Sunday, Sunday the 2nd of April, we've got West Ham at home to Southampton. West Ham need to find some results. Uh, if they don't win this game, Moyes is gone. He's got to go. But do you know what's weird? Like They've had such a bad run of form. They're third bottom in the league. I know there are only a couple of wins from getting out, but... It's just not, I just don't see it. Like, I just, I don't see what, I don't see any patterns of play. I don't see a style. The, the, the players that they've got are just, they're just not good enough. Like, Suchek, not good enough. This Flynn Downs, I know he's young, not good enough. Um, who else they got? Four Nails, not good enough. Antonio, I don't like him. He's not, he's not your front man. He's not your main man up, up top. I'm sorry. Do you know what I mean? They're just, it's just not quite working for me at the moment. And, you know, it'd be a big shame. Um, if they do, if they do go down, but this is a real six point, they've got to pull something out of the bag here, and it's against bottom of the league, Southampton, who, you know, they they've been becoming di more difficult to beat. But look, in terms of FPL, a lot of people are looking at West Ham defensive options for this double that they've got: Aged, Emerson, Zuma, all of them. Nah, none of that for me. No way. Don't even. I'm not going there. No chance. No way. No how. All it takes is a little James Ward prowess free kick zipped in the top corner, and there's your clean sheet wipeout done. So yeah, I'm. That being said, I'm, I'm probably gonna go for like a one 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 here. Uh, then second game of Sunday got Newcastle at home to Man United, a repeat of the uh, Carabao Cup final. Um, yeah, Man U sitting nice in third at the moment. Newcastle kind of dropped off a little bit, but they're in fifth place. Um, both teams are a little bit up and down in terms of form, but I reckon this could be a good game. Um, there'll definitely be goals in this game. Um, from an FPL standpoint, I've got Trippier hoping for an attacking return. I don't see him keeping a clean sheet, not with the likes of Rashford lurking around. He's flagged as yellow at the moment, but I think that was only for the international break. You know, one of those injuries. So, um, and yeah, Rashford at the moment, I'm, I'm leaning towards Rashford for the captaincy. So just waiting for the all clear from Ten Hag. Give me the all clear. And I'm probably going to captain Rashford, as are many of you guys. Uh, he's just in incredible form. He's just in fantastic form. Um, he's just he's just in that real purple patch now. So it's important for us to take advantage of that. Um, we talked about Bruno um, the other day on the live show as well. Again, this is an option that I'd love to have, but I just at the moment I just can't make way for him. I can't I can't have the fun. I don't have the funds to get there because I want Haaland and I want Kane. So, but if you go in Bruno route, good luck to you. I think it's a great shout. Um, for this game, I'm going to go 2-1 United. 2-1 United. Okay, Monday 3rd of April. Everton v Spurs. Everton. It's been seriously dished, haven't they? Um, that goal from Sims was just 
was brilliant against Chelsea last week, the last game week. And uh, he seems to have got a little bit of a tune out of them. He's done what he does and that he's made them difficult to beat. Um, and they've been gradually picking up points. So, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he, if Dyche does lead these guys to safety. These are the sorts of games where he maybe not is, is expecting to get any points, but he might he might just do that. Um, I can see this being a, quite simply a 1-0 win to Everton. I can see that being really difficult to beat. I can, Tottenham are struggling to create chances. They don't really have any creative spark other than Kane. If they can make, if they can mark Kane out the game, if they just stick Tarkovsky man to man on on Kane and just absolutely kick lumps out of him, they're not going to make anything happen. But it's just written in the stars, isn't it? That Richarlison comes on and does something stupid. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, I, I quite I quite fancy a little one nil home win here, which is a bit of a shame because I do have Kane and. You know, he is a single game week player, Kane, for me. Um, so it'd be a shame to see him blank, but I've just got a, I've just got a feeling about this one. But um, yeah, there we go. And then, yeah, Tuesday 4th of April, Bournemouth v Brighton. This is where those Brighton assets could really pay off. This is where Brighton could start moving crazy and just start putting threes and fours past teams. So um, yeah, March, Matoma, McAllister, the three players we talked about. I've got a Stupinian. This could be a quite quite easily a clean sheet here. Those of you who've got steel, this could be a clean sheet here quite easily. So um, nice little fixture there for Brighton. Um, I'm going to go 3 0 Brighton for this one. Little South Coast, little South Coast flavour down there. Uh, then we've got Leeds v Forest. Again, another bit of a, a relegation six pointer. Um, I think there'll be goals in this one, uh, provided Brendan Johnson's back in the side. I'd go 2 1 Leeds for this one. But, I mean, I don't have any assets from either of these teams. Although Jack Harrison is definitely one to look out for. He was someone I tipped at the start of the season. But, you know, with the arrival of, uh, you know, the, the, the Nonto absolutely forced himself into the team. Um, and they've had a couple of new arrivals as well. He's not really featured as much, but he's such a class player. He's very, very good, Jack Harrison. So, if you're looking for a diff, he might be one to look at. Um, then Leicester v Villa. Obviously, we know, we talked about Madison. This could be, this is like Madison and Watkins Central. Everyone's got Madison. Everyone's got Watkins. Um, the last time they played, it was just hella goals. So I'm hoping for a bit more of the same here as well. Um, so I'm going to go for, a, let's go, let's go 2-2 two, two in this one. And then, yeah, big match, Chelsea v Liverpool, 8 o'clock on Tuesday. Um, like I said, I haven't got any Chelsea assets. I haven't got any Liverpool assets. But for those of you that do, I think this is probably going to be a real tight one. Probably like a one niller. Either way, don't know, toss a coin. Toss a coin. Maybe if I was leaning, I had to, if you pressed me for a decision. Mm, Liverpool, maybe. I don't know. Liverpool. Yeah, why not Liverpool? Uh, and then, yeah, on the last day of this double game week, this absolutely mega double game week, we've got Man United at home to Brentford. Um, those of you that had the Brentford double up, this wasn't, this isn't a fantastic double game week if you're, um, if you're, if you've got Brentford players like me. Brighton's going to be tough and then Man United away is going to be tough as well. So just kind of hoping Tony doesn't get booked in that first one and then can, you know, if he can get one goal and one assist out of these two, I'll be very happy. If Brentford can keep keep a clean sheet, well, just one clean sheet from these two games, I'll be very, very happy with some Rico Henry points here. Um, trouble is, it's probably more likely to come in the Brighton game than it is in this game because I think Man U at home are just going to be so superior, so dominant. Um, and like I said, like I mentioned before, the threats, the threats are non-stop. They've got threats from every angle, whether it's Rashford, whether it's Sancho, um, you know, Veghorst, Bruno. You know, they've got they've got talent. They've got a lot of talent in the team. So, um, fingers crossed for that one. I'm going to go two 0 Man U in that one. And then the last game of the double, we've got West Ham v Newcastle. Sad to say, I can see this one being a not, uh, being a, a loss for West Ham, one or two 0 Newcastle tend to tend to win at West Ham quite often. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously you talked talk about Newcastle before in the Man U game. Didn't mention Alexander Isak. He's been on fire recently. So if you've got Isak in your team, I think this could be a great week for you. A really good week. And if I had him, do you know what? I wouldn't I, I wouldn't turn my nose up a captain in this weekend as well. I know some of you did. I know Luca, Luca, Nick Sun did. He captained in last game week and it paid off. Do you know what? He might be one of those ones that's just in the start of a real rich vein of form. So he could go off and I'm going to go 2 0 to Newcastle. So there you go, guys. There is my Game, game Week 29 uh, extended preview, I guess you can call it, because it's a long old game week. 
Uh, hopefully it's given you some things to think about. And you know what we say about here around the FPL Drew show? It's all about inspiration, not information. Um, whilst I'm here, we had an amazing live show on Tuesday night. We were joined in the studio by uh, Surya from All About FPL. And Srini joined us all the way remotely from India as well. Those guys have got a fantastic blog site that's so informative. Um, they, they build a platform for, for writers to, to write and talk about FPL. Uh, really community engaged. Um, amazing guys as well. Really sound guys. And, and although I wasn't too happy with the West Ham uh, defensive adv advice they gave me they did have a lot of knowledge and advice for for me Nick and Ray uh, who was also on the show the amazing Ray Qureshi so if you haven't checked it out yet make sure you go and check it out it's on the YouTube channel make sure you give the video a like make sure you subscribe to the channel hope you've enjoyed the content and oh yeah before I forget we've got a new merch store so if you click on any of our links from any of our social click on merchandise you can have a look at all the crazy merch in our store for you to get your hands on and support the channel we're not making any money on these things they're basically all at cost so it's all about just building the community building the brand awareness and keeping you guys involved with us so yeah uh, have a look at the shop let us know what you think of it and uh, yeah until then Take care. Bye for now.